Oh, you? You're not leaving. Oh, that was always the plan. Still is, last I heard. No, not you. Family. <laughs> this isn't intolerance cramping. She thinks of me as family. You don't. That's not fair. You. It hurts. <laughs> okay, okay, Greta, I'm stopping there. You've been very, very brave. Well done. Is it the baby? Uh, no, it's not the baby. Then what? If I was a betting woman, I'd say it was your appendix. That's what you thought last time. Gambling's stupid. Odds are fixed with a clear statistical bias. Uh, FBC, CRP, IV, normal saline and paracetamol, please. Sure. You know, it's, it's odd that you didn't notice anything when you examined her before. Are you sure it was just lactose intolerance? Are you asking if I mistook severe abdominal pain for stomach cramps? No, sorry, it's just that if it is appendicitis, it's come on awfully quickly. Maybe it's not appendicitis. She'll need a CT scan to be sure. No, no CT. Well, if you're worried about the radiation, there's... A one in 1,000 increased risk of cancer developing in children under 10. That statistic isn't proven. No, no, no. Uh, it's OK, it's OK. We'll find another way. Greta's made herself clear. Ultrasound, please, and get Obs and Gynae down here. Mm-hmm. Jason? Um, I left a message letting them know you were here. Ultrasound? She needs a CT. She's worried about the risk of the baby. You saw how she reacted. But it, it's Greta's decision and she's made it, but only we can't bully her into changing her mind. Bully her? Sorry, bad choice of word. I just mean that she's got reservations and we need to take them into account. Serena, are you angry with me about something? <laughs> now that I have to be angry with you about <laughs> It's fine, just take it, really. I've got calls of my own I have to make. But can you please let Dr. Ma to stop panicking. We... There's no need to find an alternative. We already have our co-lead. Yeah. OK. Yes, I will fax signed copies to you later. Yes. Yes, OK. OK, bye. Bernie! Jason! Auntie Serena never mentioned you were coming. Oh, surprise visit. Great. You're here for the birth. It's a few weeks early, but I was prepared. Muslins. Lots and lots of muslins. Auntie Serena says babies vomit a lot. No, no, Jason. Jason, love, Greta's not here because she's having the baby. You didn't think... Greta's fine. Is that true, Greta? Jason, I'm going to need you to calm down. Are you fine? I have severe abdominal pains, a high temperature, raised white blood cell count, and CRP. OK, what I meant was Greta is going to be fine, yes? Look, the placenta's shifted, so it's no longer an issue. The baby appears to be in no discomfort. And we've got an obs and gynae consult on their way down, just to be sure. OK? OK. Fluid in the abdomen. Yeah. yeah. We might have to operate delivering the baby by C-section first. Hey, you could be a grandmother-in-law by the end of the day. Great auntie-in-law. Jason's not your... You didn't warn Greta? No, well, we can cross that bridge when we come to it, and we'll know more once Obs and Garnier have been down. Who's taken over from Derwood? Serena Campbell, you naughty minx. Haven't heard from you since the RSC. I was starting to think you were avoiding me. <laughs> well, OK. <laughs> um, this is Fleur Fanshaw, our new head of Obs and Garnier, and this is Berenice Wolf. Ah. The paramour. Excuse me? I am insanely jealous, of course. She is exactly how I imagined her from your descriptions. <laughs> and, uh, and how was that exactly? OK, uh, we have quite an urgent case. Of course. Fill me in. Interesting woman. <laughs> Who Fleur, yeah. Mm. <laughs> She's a bit full on. She's harmless. Actually, she was a GS consultant and then retrained in Oxford. Not for a CV. <laughs> Serena, about before. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I was brusque. No, no, it's, it's not just that. that. It's just I'm, I'm tired and, and, and stressed. <laughs> and I still can't quite believe that you're here <sighs> in front of me. And I, and I feel like I, I haven't had any time to be with you to... It's, it's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day.
taken a long five months not to be with somebody. Have you been smoking? No, uh, well, just a couple of, couple of drags. You didn't have to hide it well, from me. I wasn't hiding it. No, it's just that you said you'd given up again. Yes, well, plans change, don't they? Yeah, it's fine. It's really not worth fighting over. Serena. You need to sign, scan, and send this to the email address there. This is a this is a contract for the position of co-lead. Yes. Wow. Okay. Uh, you didn't think that you should maybe mention this earlier. Well, I didn't want you to feel like I was ambushing you. Okay, but well, it's okay to ambush me now. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt. Whatever it is, I'm interrupting. But we have work to do. Baby's fine. In fact, it's coming. She's in labour. Three centimetres dilated. Congratulations. You're about to become the hottest granny in town. No! No caesarean! You have fluid in your abdomen, and we need to find out why. A C-section is perfectly safe. Babies born by a C-section are 15% more likely to be obese as adults. 20% more likely to develop asthma. Oh, for goodness sake, Greta. Not everything can be reduced to simplistic and possibly flawed data sets. I am talking about doing what's best for your baby. So am I. It's Greta's decision, Auntie Serena. Can't we bring obstetrics equipment and personnel here and then we're prepared for any developments? Can you spare some bodies? You can have mine for free. From the broad spectrum. I'll get three for a potential off list procedure. Uh, we have a pregnant patient with suspected appendicitis, and we may need to convert to a uh, surgery mid delivery. Thank you. Well, I would suggest a toast, but it's probably a tad early, even for us. Uh, you've sent it to Nairobi? Uh, not yet. No, look, I, I, I wanted to ask you a favour. Talk to Jason. Get him to see sense. What about? Greta having a C-section. But I thought you'd agreed. Well, I didn't want to make a scene. You know, Greta can be difficult and Jason will think that I'm interfering, but he'll listen to you. I'm not sure I agree. He thinks the world of you. No, I mean, I'm not sure I agree. We should manipulate her into having a C-section. I mean, you said yourself earlier, she's, she's made her decision and she's scared as it is. Not scared enough. I will not risk any harm coming to my grandchild. Sorry, is that, is that difficult to understand? It's not your grandchild, Serene. Semantics. The point is... The point is that we can't bully her into changing her mind. Never stopped you before. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? You know, I don't believe this. I, I am giving up everything for you. Uprooting my entire life to move to another continent to be with you, and you won't support me on this one thing. I thought we made that decision together. I thought it was what you wanted. I thought it was what we both wanted. Auntie Serena, you're leaving. And help noticing a little bit of tension back there. Really? Serena's always so relaxed when we go out. Go out often, do you? Not as often as I'd like. I am detecting the slightest hint of hostility from you. <laughs> well, what do you expect? I mean, from the moment. I met you. You may as well have been wearing a neon sign around your neck saying I want to snog your girlfriend. Well, can you blame me? When I first worked here, Serena was a rather dour and remote authority figure. Now she's a warm, sexy, silver vixen. On behalf of the sisterhood everywhere, I thank you. I'd watch your step if I were you. I was in the army, you know. I know 13 different ways to kill you with my bare hands. You know, all she ever does is bang on about you. Hard enough, I've been friend-zoned, but to have to listen to a never-ending list of the virtues and foibles of the magnificent Bernie Wolf is quite beyond the pale. I'd 
cut us some slack if I were you. I'll cut you some slack. I told you that from the start. I know, but then you stayed. And then Greta was pregnant. And it felt like we were going to be a family together. We are, Jason. I'll, I'll only be a few hours away. No, Roby. Eight hours non-stop flight. See? Just a plane ride. If it's just a plane ride, why don't you and Bernie visit each other more often? Because it's hard. Because... Because every time you visit, you also have to say goodbye, and, and that hurts. So it becomes easier not to. Doesn't mean you don't still love each other, though. 40% of all long-distance relationships fail. <laughs> the average time before the relationship breaks down is 4.5 months. <sighs> Statistically speaking, you should have broken up weeks ago. Ow! <sighs> I'm fine. This is to be expected and accounted for. Sounds like we're getting to the business end. You two, out. Stop bothering my patient. Brings back memories. Oh, yes. On both of your C-section. I have seen the scar. That was, um, Charlotte. Difficult breach. Uh -huh. Daughters, eh? Like to make things tricky. Eleanor? 27 hours. Blimey. Yeah. Went on for so long, Edward had to go into work. Had to. Well, so he said. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I was glad to be rid of him. He certainly wasn't being any help. <laughs> he wasn't there when she actually made an appearance. <laughs> the midwife put her on my chest and I held her at my... So tired. <laughs> but it was perfect. Well, she was. I felt this sense of relief, but also utter joy. I remember looking down at her and thinking, one day you might hold a baby of your own. I miss her, Bernie. I miss my daughter. It's not going to work, is it? I don't know. I think you do. I think we both do. I love you. I know. And I love you. And I can't stay. I wanted to. Desperately. But I have responsibilities here now. You do know. You do know. <laughs> 
she can't be a replacement for her. I know. I know. Maybe, maybe I didn't know before, you know. I went a bit tiger grandmother. <laughs> she will need me. She will. Just like Greta and Jason will. She's a very lucky girl. Serena, would you like to come and meet your grandniece? <laughs> yes, I would. So they're ready to see if you're a CT scan now, all right? Thanks, Kathleen. So cute. Hello. I am your father. I'm going to take good care of you. Did you decide on a name? Her first name will be Guinevere. But we'd like her middle name to be Eleanor. We wanted some way to honour her memory. Where is Auntie Bernie? She had to go back to Nairobi. I thought you were leaving with her. Change of plan. I can't leave here. And she has things she needs to do. You and the werewolf broke up. Don't you love her anymore? Yes, yes, of course I do. And she still loves me, but it was going to be too difficult to continue while apart. What a complete load of piffle. I have been flirting outrageously with you for months. And you've been so obsessed with her, you've hardly noticed. You were in love. Totally, utterly, blindly in love. And you let her walk out the door. It's, it's one run for tonight. Single, yes. Uh, I'll be there in about half an hour. OK, thanks. Bye-bye. And I want you to wait for me. For us. For however long it takes. I need this to work because I cannot imagine a life without you. And I know that's self. six months to a year. Slightly less romantic, but more practical, I suppose. <laughs> um, we're, we're taking Greta back into theatre. Little help? Try and stop me. Particular, not her appendix. Are we losing our magic touch? Quite the contrary. But are you sure we shouldn't stay the night tonight? Jason, he can handle things, and we have certainly earned some time to ourselves. <laughs> mm. It's been a long day. Uh, the night's just getting started. Yeah. I suppose we do still have 48 hours left. I'll get the car. Abigail, I cannot thank you enough for the privilege of being here today. <laughs> you waiting for Serena? Mm-hmm. 
You do make a nice couple, I suppose. Look after her for me while I'm away. With relish? Yeah, 13 ways to kill you, remember? 13. I shall behave. You're going to miss this place, aren't you? I'll be back soon enough. Drive. 